you know, me, me and my father, we, we don't have the, the best of relationships. I, I uh, took the good with the bad, with the ugly, and, the, you know, I forgive him for anything he's done. I, I, uh, I can look past all that, but I, I realize that we've been praying for our salvation for so long, and, and uh, there's, you know, there's no, there's no moving towards that. Just understanding that, you know, I'm, I'm broken in that relationship. My heart did break a little bit for the, the fact that I pray for him for his salvation, but yet, that kind of made me kind of go, when my heart breaks for him and, and I, my heart turns back to him, then his heart can turn to me, you know what I mean? And my father, he didn't hug, he doesn't say, he didn't, I don't think he's ever said happy birthday, he's never said Merry Christmas, he's never said I love you. He was there the, the entire time. I want to be the first one to offer a hug. Oh, it'll do my heart so Morning in Montana, man, it does not get better than this. What a great feeling. Wake up, man, you see the mountains, the, the sun is just starting to peek over, and the guys are waking up, and uh, waking up hungry. And today we're gonna go apply. We wanna dig in to a very, very important subject. It's the scripture that changed my life. It's Malachi 4, 6. He'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And so it's important, even in the context of all this beauty, man, that we remember we're here as men to learn about God and God's call in our life to connect with the next generation. So that's where we're gonna start our day. Guys, I wanna to talk to you about my favorite subject in the whole world. I call it the message of Malachi. But here's the question. Uh, have you ever heard, anybody ever heard of, of talk of generational curse? Anybody ever heard that? Some of you? Quite a few of you. Okay. Well, guess what? We're going to quit talking about that. You know what we're going to start talking about? Generational blessing. Doesn't that sound a little better? I'm tired of like going over to the dark side, just going, oh man, everything is just be careful, look out. We've got to be careful. But, but God is so much greater than any curse that could come from any source. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, right? So let's start focusing on generational blessings. And as men of God, we have the power to extend blessing to those we come in contact with, especially the next generation. So question, shouldn't every generation get better and better? Yes. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. That every generation, great-grandparents, grandparents, parents, sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, it ought to get better every time. Is that the case? No. It's often not the case. And why is that? There's always a transfer. That's what I want you to understand. You always will inherit and you always will leave legacy. Your legacy becomes the next generation's inheritance. All right? So what are you leaving to people? What are you leaving? Also, you want to think about what did you inherit? Now, we all inherited basic physical characteristics, okay? I'll never be an Asian woman. That ain't going to happen, right? I didn't inherit that from my parents. So, so basic body type and skin color and eyes, and it, we, we got that, right? Some of us, our parents have gone beyond. So maybe you inherited, you know, a house or a car or something like that. But we inherit so much more. I think we inherit a lot of character traits because of what we were taught or not taught. I think we can inherit peace in our hearts and joy, uh, faith in the Lord, friendships, confidence, courage. Those things are possible to hand down. And unfortunately, sometimes what's handed down is the opposite. What I'm looking forward to is getting a plan to save my nephews and forgive my father. Um, I was born in Saginaw, Michigan. At a young age, my mother and my father had some disagreements. The last memories that I have of my dad as a young child was the day that he came over and he beat my mom and I told him not to hit my mom and he threw me across the room. Um, and uh, not that I don't ever want to talk to my dad or ever want to be close to him, um, but it, things didn't get better from there. And uh, he beat my mother for seven years. Some of those years which I was with him. And uh, when they finally broke apart, um, 
the, the things that he did to my family, I still feel the scarring of it. My brother began to walk down a road that wasn't, wasn't great. And the funny thing is that my brother's not even my father's son, but my, my brother experienced every pain that my father gave to me. We have the ability to hand down great things to the next generation. It's up to us to choose that we will, in fact, hand down great things. So why wouldn't there be a positive transfer from generation to generation? Two reasons. One is the condition of our heart. The condition of our heart. If your heart is consumed with stuff about you, if life's about you and not about them, you're going to have a hard time handing anything really exciting down to them. What do you need to move out? in your heart? What's in the way of you handing down the most positive uh, transfer that you could to the next generation? Some of you have kids. Some of you are very young. You're not even at that point yet, but it's great, uh, Isaac, for you to be thinking about that. Cole, just start thinking about that, that you will be a generation above and others will come after you. Charles, you have nephews that I know look up to you. What will you hand to them? This is what I want us thinking about today, guys, okay? At a young age, my innocence was taken. At a young age, I, I wanted to commit suicide. I just want them to know that they don't have to live out of the same book. So it was all about making a rest, re resolution for them, a solution for them. And, you know, breaking the chains, leaving generational curses for generational blessings. Now here's this profound scripture, Malachi 4, 6, and, and the part that really grabs me, it, it says this, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Oh man, that just gets me crazy excited. Now, we often read, well, we read the scriptures in our language, whatever language that happens to be. Uh, I read it in English, and I know that I know that I'm going to miss some of the richness of the words. So what I did is I did a study. And that word father, he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, is the, it's the first word in, in, the, in the Old Testament uh, that has this rich meaning. It means father, principal, and chief. So it's a leader. So he'll turn the hearts of the leaders, the fathers. There is a male connotation, guys. This is not something we hand off to the wives, okay? This is us. So he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The word children there is the word bane. It means son of. It does not exclude daughters. And get this, it means builders of the family name. That gives me chills. When I think that my children will take the name of Molitor and they will build upon it. If I prepare them, if I hand them the right stuff when my life is over, they will build the family name. Your name, the name of Pruitt, the name of Patton, these names will be built by your children and not just your biological children, your spiritual children. The ones that God gives you to mentor, they will build your family name. I'm excited that my son Brian Pruitt there builds the name of Molitor as he takes territory from the enemy. As his ministry grows, my family name is built because God put us together how many years ago? 20 some years. Praise God, that's beautiful. I come from four generations of physical abuse and murder. And uh, as I sit here today, my, my father's uh, in, in a hospital. He's in an insane asylum because of the things that uh, happen in our family. Uh, statistically, I should have never made it. Statistically, I shouldn't have a beautiful wife at my house who, who's not terrified of me. I shouldn't have four kids who are not afraid when I walk in the house. Uh, but I am living proof uh, that God breaks generational curses and He gives people an opportunity to set a new legacy. Um, and so I am the first person in five generations in my family to love his wife, love his kids, and simply say, God, if you can, if you can do what you say you can do in the Word of God, and if you can change the legacy of my family, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Say, Dada. 
I was uh, very untrusting because if God was anything like my father, it meant he was angry, violent, and he would abandon me, okay? And so uh, God is Father to me, it took a while for me to learn to trust God under that title, under that name. When I gave my life to Christ, I gave my life to Christ as Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my Savior and King. I didn't have problems with that. I had a problem with saying, and you are my Father. That was even more personal to me. And that meant that I had to trust him beyond anything I could ever imagine, that he actually had my best in mind, that he actually, he could love me like a father loved a child. I didn't understand that type of love. That was so far from me. I, I didn't understand that type of love whatsoever. But in knowing God, I learned what the love of a father was. Uh, and knowing God, I've learned how to be a father to my children. And knowing God, I've learned how to be a husband to my wife. So we've got a couple of words defined now. The word heart, he'll turn the hearts of the fathers, is the, is the word leb, and it means the center of something. It's the mind, it's the will, it's the emotions, it's the feelings, it's the whole thing. All right? And sometimes the intellect has to come into place because the next generation can make you upset. Anybody realize that? Huh? None of these young guys here, but my kids did, and I know I sure did for my parents. But there are times you've got to override your emotion where you're upset with the next generation. And you have to say, my job doesn't change. My role and responsibility to take care of these little ones, it doesn't change. So that's the center of something. So what does this word turn mean? It's my favorite word in the whole thing. He'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. It's, it's a variety of words, but it means, it means to turn back. It means to go back home again. And we've got men that are still in the house, but they've left emotionally. Sports Center and TV and, and their golf game has consumed them, and they're not present even though they're physically in the room. Go back home again. It means to rescue. It means to refresh. Aren't those powerful words? I like this one. It means to carry again. Now, my son Chris is six foot six, 200 and some pounds. If I attempt to carry him again, please call 911 because I will be injured. But the word of God says, Brian, you're to carry him as you did when he was about eight pounds, when he was helpless and defenseless. I am to carry him in my soul. I am to carry him in my prayers and never let him go while I have breath. This is what this powerful passage of Scripture means. Now, for those of us that are getting a little older, a little snow on the roof, a little snow in the mustache, I have great news for you. Because that passage says, He'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and then what? The, the hearts of the children to the fathers. Every word that I just shared with you is exactly the same in both passages. And here's what it means, men. When you are old and you are gray, and you don't have the vitality that you once had. And you understand that the candle's burning down just a bit in your life. Scripture says, we're a vapor. We're only here for a short period of time. You will not be alone. It means that those young ones that you poured into, they will come back. They will refresh you. They will rescue you. They will not leave you alone or defenseless. They will carry you again. It is the power of God's mind to say, as I create humanity, I do not want gaps between the generations. I want the old to love the young. I want the young to love the old. And I want them to walk together all the days of their life. Isn't that profound? That is the plan of God for us as men. Now, guys, it starts with us. I don't expect the next generation of young people to turn their hearts to us until they've seen us turn our hearts to them. It just takes some effort. It takes a plan like we talked about. It takes a heart change. I was adopted, you know, at two and a half, and so, but I never dealt with fatherless issues. I mean, because of my dad, he took me on completely. He, he absorbed me completely, and it was no well, you know, because of your past and where you've come from, 
but he pulled me in and because of that love, because of the love of my mom and my dad, there was a lot of issues I, that I should have dealt with that I never did. It never came to my door to deal with. Simply because they, they, they understood what love was and they poured it into me completely. And so you were talking about living, the, you, you knew the curse and you had seen it. I grew up on the blessing. And so for me growing up, you know, trying to figure out whether or not God loves me or not was never an issue. I always knew God loves me. My issue was I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I was just, you know, just, just, I was just like, I'm not, that's, that's for a later time. But, but that, that night was a very powerful night, I think, for all of us that we begin to turn our hearts back. And even though, you know, me and my dad have a great relationship and had a great relationship for years and still do, uh, you know, I see those, those, there are people that don't have that, that didn't raise up that, but, but that's where we talk about going out to that generation myself, that I could provide that for somebody that, that what we were talking about, that the curse, the Bible says that, that uh, the, the sins of the father will visit the children, the third and fourth generation. But the next verse is the blessing goes to the thousandth generation. This ministry is a total team effort and you can be part of that team. Perhaps you've got a location, a ranch or a retreat center with lots of outdoor activities where we could shoot our next series. Perhaps you could be a sponsor for one episode of the entire series, or you could even be on the show. If you want to help us to produce high quality Christian television, build strong families and great dads, please go to our website. Thank you. We're headed up to a mountain lake. It's just exhilarating to be out in that kind of an environment. And uh, there's all kinds of trout in this lake. It's gonna be a challenge to fish it, but man, we're gonna, we're gonna get there and see what we can do. My dad is a, is a man who is just like me. He, but unfortunately, all the generational curses that he had in his family, he accepted. I chose not to accept those. One of the things Bishop said to me, you never know what God protected you from. And it, I've never looked at it that way. Yeah, wow. I've never looked at it as maybe God was protecting me from something. Maybe he was... And I, and I guess I do know that he was because every time my father spoke to me, it was something negative. It wasn't a great experience. But there's, there had to be some times where he reached out and I didn't reach back. I know of one for sure. There had to be some times where he did. But I feel like when you're hurt, and that's the whole scripture, the, the, the heart of the child turning their hearts back to the father and the father turn, turning his heart back to the child. If both of them are not willing to turn their hearts, then nothing's going to happen, and it could be hurtful. And, you know, I just, I just thank God that I got bro both perspectives now, you know, and I'm okay with making the first step now. I think, I think that's the whole point of, like, a son. Like, when he's been hurt, he's been broken, and my whole thing used to be, well, you brought me here. I didn't ask to be here. It's your job to mend this relationship. But now it's kind of like, you know what, if you died today and I didn't have that relationship that I, I thought we needed, I would be broken even more, mm -hmm. even the more. So now it's like, I'm okay, I'm gonna make the first step. I'm gonna be vulnerable. My heart is turned back. Please turn your heart back. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, this morning when we got up and we, we got rocking here, we talked about what? A very important message of Malachi. Malachi. What's the verse, chapter and verse? 4-6, which says, extra credit, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. That sounded like a Gregorian chant. <laughs> man, oh man, put your hoodies up. 
He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. There's another part to that, which we don't like to add, but you have to, or I'll come and strike the land with a curse. It's a powerful message. It, it revolutionized my life. I just want to get a little feedback from you guys. What, what did that speak to you today? What, what have, you been, have you been thinking about since this morning? Anybody? Yes, sir. Charles. Um, when we talked about it this morning, it made me realize a couple of things. Um, you know, it says that he'll turn the father's heart to the children and the children's hearts to the father. I guess like sometimes like when you're going through fatherlessness issues, um, you don't want to talk to your dad, even if he is reaching out. So, I, I, you know, it made me think about maybe sometimes I missed his reach out and didn't want to reach back because I was hurt because of the pain that he caused for all that time. So that's powerful, man. That's powerful. You know, you shared something with me about you've got two nephews, right? How old are they? Uh, Aiden is uh, seven. Okay. Isaiah is, is five, five and a half or six. Or and you, you kind of sense that you're going to be a father figure in their life? Yeah, actually, you know, when we talked about power to plan, I was planning in my mind what I was going to do to help them and give them a father figure a little bit better. My brother's in prison, so um, they both were growing up without a father. My brother did not choose, and I'll talk about my nephews a lot, he didn't choose to make better choices. But he's got two kids now, and he's in prison, and it worries me because and I don't want my nephews to write the same story that we did. I just want them to know that they don't have to live out of the same book. So the passage that, that when we talked about, you know, the, the original words, remember that heart turning, that heart turning. So it's, it's almost like, man, really? And can it be that simple? Absolutely. Some years ago, I was on a, an elk hunt in Colorado and I met a whole bunch of godly men. It was a kind of a Christian camp. We met this one guy, and man, he was just the strongest guy in the world. Just, you know, one of those guys goes from top of his head to shoulders, no neck, no ear, just big, strong dude. The short version of the story is, he opened up about the third day we were there, and he shared with me that his son, his precious beloved son, the apple of his eye, an outstanding all-state athlete, had gotten massive scholarships and went off to college, university, was the superstar stud of the whole place. He was just, he just had it all. Well, he had more than all, because when he got off on his own in that university setting, he fell for everything the enemy threw at him. He walked away from his scholarships, he walked away from his university, he walked away, didn't want anything to do with his mother or his father or his family. He was gone for two years. And this guy's up there in the mountains of Colorado hunting elk with us, and his heart is just aching. We shared the message of Malachi 4.6, and we said, fathers, when your heart turns, God will work with that, and he will reach to that next generation. This ain't magic. This is God putting something in motion, a principle that will work. And so, I shared the message, and of course, you know, a bunch of elk hunters, everybody's trying to look as tough as they can, and my old buddy Harry, he's an ultimate dad, old silver fox guy, he just says, anybody want any prayer? Of course, nobody moved, you know, we're all just godly men, oh, we're, bleh, bleh. how about them bears, you know, one of those deals? And finally, this guy, I won't even say his name, all right, you can pray for me. And so we just sat him in a chair, and we put our hands on his shoulders and started to pray for him and God just broke his heart into a thousand pieces. He began to weep. This is in the midst of all these nasty, gnarly old elk hunting guys. And here's this old guy laying on the floor just crying out, and he cries out and his prayer was profound. I want my son back. Father, give me my son back. And he, and he said it through tears. Well, we got done praying, he got done crying, and all of a sudden you're kind of like, Okay, how do we get out of this one? Oh, where, where, where do we go from here? You know, as godly men. So we all just kind of bucked up a little bit, you know. Everybody got black coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we went back into kind of our camo phase, right? Well, went to bed, got up the next morning at 4.30, went out hunting, and I, that's the only place in the world where everywhere you go is uphill, right? So you go uphill all day long, finally come back, we have dinner, right after dinner, somebody else is gonna share about whatever. The phone rings in the kitchen, one of the staff ladies comes out and she goes, uh, sir, there's a phone call for you. And it was this guy, his name's Jeff. 
Old Jeff walks out to the kitchen, he picks up the phone, and he goes, we're not paying any attention, all right? And he walks back to us, and he's got a look on his face like Christmas morning, presents under the tree, and one too many rides on a roller coaster. You're not sure which way he's gonna go. I mean, he's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So what in the world, dude? He goes, y'all ain't gonna believe this. That was my wife. My son called her this afternoon. It was a Wednesday. She said, he said, Mama, are you going to church tonight? She said, yeah, midweek service. He said, can I go? She didn't even know he was back in their town. She said, yeah. So they went. And this young man gave his life back to the Lord, gave his life back to his mother, gave his life back to his father. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Men, the government can't fix it. A new program won't fix it. Money can't fix it. And by fix it, I'm talking about the next generation and their brokenness. What fixes it is your heart turning to them. It's all we've got, but it's all we need. And God will use it. Amen. 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 All right. I didn't even know why. I really didn't know why I was here until yesterday. But uh, everything Brian Molitor said yesterday, and it just, it just teared me up. I don't want to cry. I'm like trying to be real manly. Mosquitoes were biting me and stuff. And, um, but, it, you know, he asked to pray for me. And, you know, I remember David Turner saying, just, just receive it, receive it, receive it. And um, I did. Let me pray for you. I need a couple of you men to pray for Charles. And so they gathered around Charles laid hands on him and just blessed him. They encouraged him. They prayed over him. And boy, during that time, it was pretty emotional. It was pretty emotional. But I know that God did a deep work in his life through these other men. It's just so much weight was on my heart because so much stuff I'm thinking about, so many things I want to happen and I'm trying to make them happen. But last night I realized, I realized that you have to let God do what he wants to do. When those guys laid their hands on me yesterday, I can literally feel the chains of everything that's happened in my life breaking. I didn't have any questions about anybody's intentions. I felt safe. The band of brothers that we have here, um, they let God use them to break some chains. Some chains, some lay aside some weights that so easily besets me. Feels like rivers have flooded from my eyes as I change into a better man. I look up to the stars and know it's 